Hi, welcome back to my blog Edis English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today we are going to read William Wordsworth's The Solitary Nepal. We will try to understand the meaning and the very device of this poetry and how it beautifully renders the romantic as well as idealistic view of life and music. In Warsawathian poetry, the temple of Mother Nature is a constitution of three guiding principles. If you study Warsawathian poetry, you will find the solitude, the silence and the loneliness. Here, the loneliness is no punishment but living with oneself. And his, the solitary rapper is typically characterized by them which results in a perfect ballad with its simplicity, suggestiveness, pathos and verbal music. Inspired by Wilkinson's tour in Scotland, the poem is a sweet melancholic mimir up to this Scotland. While poet Wordsworth was touring Scottish Highland along with his dear sister Dorothy, he met a rapper girl in her spontaneous moods. Such of these sweet piece of memory of this Highland Raper girl is beautifully exhibited through this poem. The poet has seen a Highland girl working alone in the cornfield. Here is a piece of ordinary human life and Wordsworth's choice of the subject illustrates his theory of poetry where there is elevation of common and humble theme with the glory of simple lyrical grace relinquishing the doggerel parts of the neoclassical poetry which uh, burdened the so-called ease of poetry writing. Wordsworth describes how she is ripping and musing a folk song rapturously which at once arrests his mind and he gently asks passers-by not to disturb her because such a melody and passion which should not be intruded by any artificial care and anxiety of ours. So through Ray Pargal's music, Wordsworth wishes to enter into the domain of musicality, into the domain of spontaneity which he harbors in his poetry. The poetry coming from spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions. The solitary rapper is written in ballad meter. It is about a mysterious effects of the song of the rapper girl that has been on the mind of the poet. The lone figure in the field becomes as much a part of its natural surroundings as the music coming from it and the poet tries in vain to guess the theme of her haunting melody. The impression the song makes upon the poet is lasting one. Lasting one and long after he left the very actual scene of the incident, it haunts him. It haunts him romantically, it haunts him poetically, it, it haunts him in creative gesture to find the very meaning and the very mirth of singing. The sweet but melancholic tune of the girl's song in this secluded and solitary atmosphere is magical and spellbound. Spellbound the very mystic nature by which the poet Wordsworth is so engrossed with. Now coming to the poem, I am just stating just look at the very metrical design as well as the very sonorous music of the poem. Behold her, single in the field, young solitary highland lass, ripping and singing by herself. Stop here or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. You all know, ripping means cutting and gathering ripe grain with a hook or a sickle and again the solitary, the very word 
single and lonely but here is no negative attitude to it but loneliness of soul loneliness of living with one's own the rapper is a obviously the girl it refers she is the only human figure in this landscape everything is natural surroundings and the very sea the very girl is within in the very atmosphere you wonder that is something happening not far in distance now what is this highland lass lass means calves it is obviously the scottish highlands it refers to the mountainous northern region of scotland old customs and language still survived in the highlands long after other places become industrialized and urbanized and that piece of land is itself a very pocket of natural surroundings with ethnic people with variety with their mirth and joy and sorrows while the deep valley was filled with the sonorous voice the poet cannot but ask one everyone to take a notice of her in fact it is a call for us to search for the perfect voice amid nature an appeal to introspection obviously an appeal to introspection thus it says oh listen for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound the poet is so enthralled by the rapper song that he finds it prettier than the night angel or the cuckoo soothing night angel that the walk weary travelers in arabian deserts while resting in an oasis might listen or the cuckoo silence breaking clarions in hebrides island both cannot surpass the present melody of the rapper's god so the second stanza it reads no night angel did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travelers in some shady haunt among arabian sands a voice so thrilling never was heard in spring time from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of seas among the farthest hebrides you all know where the arabia is arabia a desert country was for the europeans a land of magic imagined through acquaintance with eastern folklore obviously the arabian nights is very popular the rapper song is compared to that of a night angel singing in an oasis in the middle of the unknown desert and that very song has been heard by weary travelers in or after the desert walk the song has the same unfamiliar charm for the poet as a night angel song would have for weary travelers in the arabian desert now here you all know a little bit of geography where the hebrides islands are it's a group of islands uh, in an area of the west coast of scotland on the north atlantic it is barren thinly inhabited ice bound in winter the islands would have a brief spring and summer when the cuckoos come and sings for this world and that song would have been a most welcome sound for the travelers as well as for visitors and that song the night angel song at the desert arabia and cuckoo song at these hebrides can only be compared with that of the song of this rapper girl now what the sounds it should be what the songs is about however as the rapper girl is singing a gallic tone gallic dialect the poet cannot follow the theme of the song the poet's difficulty in understanding the song arises from the fact that the song is in 
old Scottish, you know, that old Scottish, the Gaelic dialect, which has been dying out since English become the official language of this Scotland. And the Scottish Parliament merged with that of British Parliament uh, from way back in 1707. Now in the third stanza, will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plenty numbers flow for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago. Or is it some more humble lay, familiar matter of today? Some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been or maybe again. The poet only guesses what the girl might be singing about. Old unhappy far off things and battles long ago. Or that it might be humbler, a simple song about matter of today. The poet only guesses at the subject matter of what the girl says. It is probably a folk ballad, a story told through a song, often with a refrain that is repeated. You know what the ballad is. A ballad or the subject of the ballad can be from heroic exploits or to domestic drama. It would often have a sorrowful ending. So there is sonorous musicality in it and it is often accompanied with layers and that means with musical presentations. Now in the fourth stanza or the concluding stanza, the poet Wordsworth carries out or extends what the meaning should be. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work, over the sickles bending. I listened motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore, long after it was heard no more. Whatever she sings about it seems to be unending, and the poet listens to them motionless and still. The rapturous poet, however, reluctantly leaves the place. But the song of the girl leaves an abiding influence in him and as he travelled up the hill, he carries her song with him in the core of his heart as a source of joy forever. So it says, The music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. The very word of Wordsworth if you find in his definition of poetry, the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility. So whenever the poet is in tranquil mood, the, the image or the very the song of the Repan Kal pops up. It is undying because it is stored in the memory well. Wordsworth carries this song of the rapper girl in his heart because such a sweet sad enchanted song is spontaneous and is identified with nature. The rapper for a moment becomes the soul of the solitary valley. The heart song becomes the sad music of humanity. In the romantic heart of the poet such a sight and sound will never sink into oblivion and perhaps it is recollected. And whenever it is recollected, they will give him endless joy and inspiration. And the rapper song as, as well as the rapper girl is undying. And that is the spontaneity of creativity. That is the spontaneity of creation. Again, here Wordsworth implicitly means to say that he has drunk the elixir of the music and assimilates it in his existence. Thus the music he bears becomes his persona and that is the very entity of romantic poetry. So I think you have gone through the whole of the poem and if there is any sort of difficulty just pop up here ask me a question I will try my best to give proper explanation to that. So like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.